Hello everyone, Rose Pants here, and I am back for chapter two, highlighting the pot book. Today's chapter is early slash ancient history. Throughout history, cannabis has been used not only as a food source, but also as a fiber, a medicine, and what they consider a magically empowered religious sacrament. Now in this chapter, they use terms such as it's likely because, you know, it's ancient history, so we can only be so certain about certain things. But, you know, when it comes to cannabis, we feel like we've gotten a certain grasp on it nowadays and we've got solid information to go by. Starting with cannabis in China, the earliest record of cannabis being used as a medicine goes as far back as 2800 BCE. It is mentioned in the medical compendium Pen Sao, I believe is the pronunciation, of the legendary Chinese emperor Shen Neng and Shen Nung determined that the female plant was a very high source of yin. And so it's that whole balance. Obviously, everyone's familiar with that term yin and yang. And so they found a certain balance in cannabis and realized that there was inherent good in it. The female part of the plant was known as chuma, whereas the male part of the plant was just ma is the just straight hemp and they use cannabis to treat a whole wide ranging ailments like they have this whole list that says treatment of absent-mindedness constipation malaria something I've never even heard of very berry or berry berry rheumatism and menstrual problems so he deemed it a superior elixir of immortality Obviously, from the very beginning, they knew this was a very important plant. Moving on in China's history, literally 2,000 years ago, a surgeon was using cannabis in order to sedate their patients. Totally going to butcher this pronunciation, but Hu Tao is the surgeon who was performing dangerous and complicated surgeries, reading off of page 18 by the way, complicated surgeries were rendered painless by an anesthetic prepared from cannabis resin and wine known as Ma Yo. In the 5th century of BCE, there was a Taoist priest who actually referred to cannabis um, in combination with ginseng and claimed that it actually set forward time and revealed future events. Moving right along into history, we have the ancient Mideast history where cannabis was brought to the Mideast by Caucasian tribes that lived on the border between what is now Russia and China. The people known as Scythians, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly, played a huge and like they pretty much changed the future of cannabis just in themselves and without their influence I definitely don't think that cannabis would be what it is today. So the reason why these people are so important and specific is because they were some of the first people to ever employ horse-drawn carriages and they would travel around and when they were doing their travels, they spread cannabis. Scholars across the board credit these people for spreading cannabis across the ancient world and cannabis knowledge in general. They weren't just like, hey, here's this plant, figure it out on your own. Like, it's documented that they spread the knowledge in general. A part of cannabis history that I personally find really interesting is the different vernacular and the different like root words and how the word cannabis has grown through history and its different meanings. So in this chapter two of the pop book, going through ancient and early history, moving on into Mesopotamia, they obviously had their own word that referred to cannabis. Of course, I'm just guessing that I'm saying this right, but I believe Kunabu was the Mesopotamian word that referred to a source of oil, fiber, and medicine in the, the base of cannabis. Again, ancient Mesopotamia was a huge player in the use of cannabis as a medicine. They really went 
wide range with what they were using it for. And let's see, there's another one where they just like list off certain things. Ancient Mesopotamian, this is from page 20. Ancient Mesopotamian preparations that included cannabis were also in the treatment of certain diseases of the chest and lungs, stomach problems, skin lesions, lice, swollen joints, and a variety of other maladies. So, you know, this wasn't just like a one-time use, hey, we think it might kind of work for this, like, it was their wide range, like, hey, you've got this, let's give you cannabis. Hey, you've got that, let's give you cannabis. It's gonna make you better. Moving right along through history, the original Hebrew text of the Old Testament referred to cannabis as both a incense and a, what do they call it, an intoxicant. So they realized that there's multiple uses as well, just as everyone else in the history before them realized there's multiple uses for this plant. <laughs> so the Mesopotamian had their own word for cannabis I mentioned earlier, Kanubu, I'm probably butchering that horribly, but that is kind of far off from the word cannabis that we have today. But actually the Hebrew brought it a little bit closer and it's probably the direct link from how we got that word today. So traditional Hebrew referred to it as cannabis or cannabis with a K instead of a C. And in the construction of this word, the root con meant reed or hemp, while bosom, that part of the word, meant aromatic. So this word appeared, they say, in Exodus 30:23, Song of Songs 4:14, Isaiah 43:24, Jeremiah 6:20, and Ezekiel 27:19. So it was not just like one time in the original Hebrew text of the original testament that they brought up cannabis, like just one little mention, that's it. Like multiple times they mention this plant. Now with Christian history, it is not so spelt out quite as clearly as it was with the Hebrew text where they're using that word, cannabis or cannabis. You know, with the Christian history, there was just a whole lot of talk about holy oil or anointed oil and just the use of this special oil in specific. And a whole lot of conclusions have been made speculations maybe you would want to call them, but they think it's cannabis oil that they're talking about. Again, even with this, it's a whole wide range of things that they would use this for. They would use cannabis oil to treat certain ailments. I'm on page 24 for this, where they list off that cannabis has been shown to be effective in the treatment of not only epilepsy, but many of the other ailments that Jesus and the disciples healed people of, such as skin diseases and mat 8, 1 to 8, 4, also in 10, 8, 11, 5, Mark 1, 40, Luke 5, 12, 7, 11, and then as well as eye problems in John 9, 6, and menstrual problems in Luke 8, 4, 3. So huge, wide range of things. I really love the way that this chapter breaks down that kind of speculation of was Jesus really using cannabis oil or was it some combination of some other holy oil. So from page 26 they say, although the idea of Jesus and his disciples using a healing cannabis ointment may seem far-fetched at first, when weighed against the popular alternative, one that is held by millions of believers, that Jesus performed his healing miracles magically through the power invested in him by the omnipotent Lord of the universe, the case for ancient accounts of medical cannabis seem far more likely explanation. And personally, I agree. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about all of the history that I've gone over with you guys. I mean, do you believe it? Are you speculative? Do you not believe it at all? What do you think? Now that we've fed our brains with cannabis knowledge, I'm going to go ahead and feed the rest of my body the necessary cannabinoids that I know that it loves.
Thank you guys so much for joining me for this episode highlighting some of the key facts from chapter two of the plot book, Ancient Slash Early History. The end of this chapter, just to round it out, kind of touches on the freedom of religion aspect of cannabis and its use. I forgot to mention that this chapter two, the early slash ancient history, was written by Chris Bennett, and he quotes on page 26, I have come to see the right to use cannabis as even more fundamental than religious freedoms, for humanity created religion, but no matter what God you believe in, you had better believe that God created cannabis. Because there is a difference there. There's a huge line drawn in the sand where it doesn't really matter what God you believe in, of course, somehow cannabis got here. It's a plant that was just naturally growing on this earth, got proof that it's been here thousands of years. We've had this evolutionary process with this plant and it really in its long-term history of what they say is over 10,000 years, there's been no grave harm done to humankind. We've just always coexisted harmoniously with this plant. I definitely enjoy and appreciate the relationship that I have with cannabis. And I sincerely hope that after gaining some knowledge from the pop book that your relationship with cannabis can grow as well. I will see you guys next time. Bye.